Good morning. This is the demonstration, uh, still, of uh, the that I painted for a friend's art group on Wednesday afternoon. I've painted it several times, or several versions of it. I call it the Surrey Hills, Winter in the Surrey Hills. Just a, a dominant tree with subordinate area over here. I try to suggest some open areas here of, of snow or of something going on. Um, very enjoyable afternoon. Uh, I hope you like this one. Uh, it's it's not uh, video. It's not done as a video demonstration. But uh, I had a lot of fun with with, the, with this uh, new group, and uh, very nice of them to have asked me. Right, I'll take all that off of there, and we'll go back to to normal. Uh, this is. Uh, I'll have to uh, adjust the. Uh, camera again so forgive me for a moment while I just do that. Now I, I'm not really sure of what I'm going to do here. That's that's good enough. I'll just put it out to the side of the camera. Now this is what I'll clump it. Right. Okay that, that'll do. Let's just uh, zoom out a little mm, bit more than that. Right. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll make up uh, a sort of a reflection scene but I noticed looking out my door on this beautiful day it was a bit overcast it's lovely and bright now but it, the, the sky itself was bright but when I looked closely the the mist was starting to to go with all the very light cloud so I'm going to try and do something uh, of that sky very simple but bright but showing a bit of mist with the light breaking through rather than show the darker bits as clouds um, and we'll do, we'll do another another sort of river picture. I like doing them. And uh, so we'll uh, just have the some trees here, hor horizon, and some distance, and so, uh, the banks coming across here. I'm always inspired by my local river, River Wandle in Ravensbury Park. It's, only, it's, it's a fast flowing chalk stream, but very, very nice. And here it's, it's fairly shallow uh, and, and, and probably about uh, 20 yards wide, I suppose. Maybe about that. The little bridge over it where we stand and, and, and spot the carp swimming up and down if we're lucky. There is a bit of an, uh, an island caused by a tree a fallen tree, willow tree, here. I might show it, I might not. So, wet in wet, my brush is all over the place, having, uh, well, not having done a demo from, for you for a couple of days. So there we are, my, my palette of lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paint grey, and burnt sienna. Uh, I use the burnt sienna in preference to uh, the burnt umber, but they're both used very useful colours. But I don't use the whole lot; it makes it too complicated. So I will wet the paper all over. That's a very warm morning in London, or South East of England, anyway, where I live. So I'll just wet that. Now, what you find is the paper will stretch, and then we can reclip it. I was asked several times at the demonstration afternoon, do I stretch my paper? And I was pleased to say, no, I don't. If I'm doing wet in wet, like this, the paper expands uniformly, then I just reclip it and it, it stays perfectly flat. Right, okay, let's just put in a bit of uh, sienna, a bit of nice warm sienna over the sky, the usual technique, but I think the more you see it, the more you practice it, the easier it gets. So we just put that there like that. And then while that's damp, we're going with a bit of, bit of blue and a bit of Payne's Grey, but quite light, and just paint it. That's all it was really. That's going to go with a bit of a 
call it flower, look at it. Just, just drag that across there. If this goes into a hard edge, it'll be because of the atmosphere being very dry. So I just reclip the paper. You see it's spread out already. But now it's, now it's back to flatness. Now this is going on here, so I'll try my brush and just... Oops! Ooh. That was the opposite of dry. Let's just take the excess water off there. As that's drying off a bit now, let's sort of put in some background colour. A bit of blue, a bit of yellow. That's a bit of a crimson. I think I've needed to warm this, uh, this brush out. It's just losing its hairs now. Nice summer day. Just vary the colours, a bit of sienna. Just trying to create uh, some depth there. But, um, but it also gives distance, but it's not, you can't see very far down this stream anyway, just from that anyway. Right, so that's, that's that. So we can come in with the heavier greens up the top there. There's a bit of light red into that mix. Uh, uh, let's get some nice yellow in here. And as that dries I can paint the shadow parts of the trees. Right, red, blue, painting into the depth of the shadow area. Right, a bit more. If you want um, the colour to actually stop from spreading, you've got to put it in neat, like straight from the tube. So if we take that. Perfectly flat, and the sky it was more or less that. It was it was the brilliance of the sky, of the sun coming through the uh, the, 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 the the light, very light haze. As we come down with the bank, it will just vary the colours, but add some warmer reds. I'm make, making this up. It does. The banks are, are a definite bank, but uh, I like to to do this. But I can put some grasses sticking out there. Bluer as it going into the distance. Right. Okay. <coughs> Let that dry off a bit more. Now we'll go into a slightly uh, darker area. Uh, slightly, well, I was just saying, I don't want to make the right look like the left, so we'll just, just vary that. We can put a bit of dark on there, red and blue. I'm just experimenting with the greens here and adding a bit of warmth as we come down. So more about creating art than, than realism. Put that kind of across there. I can put the island on the other side, can't I? If I bother. Right, let's get some nice shadow area in here. Right, 
I'll paint the reflections afterwards, I think, when, when it's all dry. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to etch in with my fingernail or a card. I'm trying to get some pleasant shapes there, so let's just... I'm trying to vary the colours in here and there is a sort of reason for that and that I can put in some, some rocky rocky bits they don't exist in the river wonder that's for sure but but we're just being inspired by a little chalk stream to make a painting that's it, that's enough. I'm bigger, bigger here, and then we we'll do the same here. So by scraping the paint, you get a shadow area. So you go from light to dark. Well, just all good. Good clean fun. Right, okay, let's uh, go back into that now. So we want some some shadow. So I'm just using the blue and the light red. And just just pushing that in. I can paint some solid stuff over it as well as etch out. But when you're going to do this etching, the scratching out, you do need to have a darker Clumps of bushes. A dark green. And you'll notice I've not used Payne's grey in this. Oh, I think I did just for the bit in the sky, but not a lot. So these are, this is a dark green. Some of the ladies I was demonstrating for on Wednesday didn't know anything about the hake, but uh, they do now, but they've all ordered one, and when they get it, they'll find out just how much water it holds, and how difficult it is really to get used to. Uh, this is the shadow. Right, as that dries, we can clean the hake and get, get a nice. Uh, you see, this is wearing out this one, it's, the hairs are coming out thick and fast now. We've got another one ready to break in. So we'll put in some burnt sienna and ultramarine. It makes a nice silhouette is sort of dark. Take some water off out of that. Right. So let's just put in some we can come out, come off in the distance, we can put in some 
few of bits, no detail in the mystery back now. I think I'll have to complete that with a rigger. Remember that you do need quite a lot of water with the rigger because it being a small brush it, it doesn't hold a lot of water but you can get some some really good thick lines with it by letting the hairs at the end spray look I can get about a quarter of an inch thick line with it going up into the canopy I can strengthen up the tops of this with a bit of, bit of texture, a bit of stipple or whatever I'd have to anchor these but I'll do that with the blue and the brown but the uh, sienna Put a can put a floor up in there. I've got my island on that I think. So that's sort of a negative of what is actually there. There's some nice dark in there now. Blue, sienna. Look it makes a lovely dark but there's my sienna. Ultramarine. Lovely, lovely warm, rich dark. So I just put in some obscuring stuff in there. So it makes the trees look as if they're actually growing out of something. I will uh, do the same over here. But I want to just show some some blue. You also a good, a good um, colour to use for distant twigs and branches like this is uh, sienna, raw sienna and lemon yellow it's a uh, uh, it just looks just more distant rather than putting blue in all the time Oh, well, I probably might have to strengthen that a bit. A bit more blue, but uh, we'll see. Right, let's go over the other side, put in some. some branches, and tree chunks. See, it's quite a thick line. You have to control where the actual brush goes. Don't put too much in there. I like that green. And a lot of uh, trees are green, a grey green. You look at them, they're, they're not really, some are grey, or a form of grey, or grey green. I won't overdo those. <coughs> right. So we'll put in that island here. And it's all a nice summery green. It's going darker now. As we number on to autumn. Right, let's just it's got dark enough really. Red, blue, just missing primaries to give me a darker green in there. Right, let that go. Now I'm going to put all some darker stuff in here now. So I'm just mixing the light red, the ultramarine, and the lemon yellow. It's going to be a richer green so we can just. Just texture in here, put some leaves on the trees. A bit darker maybe. Bit of shadow in there. <coughs> 
turn over the other side. Just keeping away from that paint grey. Using the sides of the leg to do this. Oh, it's okay. In the hake. And I can put just a few more branches in, and twigs in that. And then we'll do the same with the, the floor over here. We'll just put some undergrowth in, in this. Red, blue, a bit of umber, a bit of the sienna. And this is all Texturing along this, the bank of this. Alright, it's just adding some texture here and there. Just to give a bit of interest to, to the foreground, although you're not looking at your feet when you're looking out in the distance. I try to create an, an illusion of depth here. By using colour for aerial perspective. Okay, I'm going to dry this, so if you're listening on headphones, take your headphones off now. Because I want to put the reflections in, but it's got to be really dry to do that. Here we go. I've just ordered another hundred sheets or a block of hundred sheets of the uh, Fabriano. This is Fabriano, 130 pounds, a buy from Art Discount, Grantham's. They, they do these, these blocks of a hundred, it's a it's 130 pound weight and it's very economical, it's very good for this type of painting. You don't need to use expensive heavyweight papers to do what we're doing here. I need to bring that down there as well. That's gone a little bit of my that's right. my blue and, and my distance here coming. A bit more blue in there. Got some darker. Coming along these banks here. Got some yellow in there. Oh, nice. 
Znači, ja radi ne. Just drag that off. Just put a bit of clay water on the edge of that. Just so that it softens. So I'm trying to reflect that. Alright, now we've got these heavier reflections in here. Not quite the same colour, is it? But never mind. While that's drying, I'll uh, put in some of these trunks here. Uh, just in. Try to get them more or less where they are above. So what you put in below, you've, you're showing what's above. So there's little bits here. Nothing there, just these little ones here. So I'll make those to slightly darker, just so they register really. Okay, right, I'll give that a bit of a dry, hair dryer on. Now we want some some grasses, reedy stuff in the foreground. I will just also it fills up the space. Now. is coming up here and coming down. What you put below you've got above. Okay. I'll uh there's a bit of a blob there. I'll, uh, put some more birds in. Just to fill a little hole in the massive sky. Right, I'll sign that, I'll put it in a mount and we'll have a look and see what it looks like. Sign it, yeah. Uh, right, I won't put a figure in it. I'll put that in my, my mount, excuse me while I go and get the mount. I've got two large lumps of hardboard hinged together with a load of mask with a, well, a load of duct tape to uh, to carry my my stuff to and from these demonstrations. Clips off. Oh, there we are. Just another another simple. Thing. What I was going to do, um, a bit of fur tissue. Uh, I, I'm using this inch flat brush. I'll just wet it. It's shaking, it's squeeze that much of the water. And I'm just going to go across here. Like that. It'll give an impression of, of a bit of wind roughing. Well, that's the idea. That's all we need to do. Okay. 
that's it very simple I hope you enjoyed that I'll just uh, move the camera around a bit so that it's square more square all right okay there we are another simple river scene early morning simple early morning river scene um, I don't want to put any more detail in that it's not the greatest colour but um, I'm quite pleased with it hope you enjoyed that I'll zoom in you can have a little look that's the island and that's the the bank so you're, you're creating an illusion of a reflection by repeating what's above below if you don't put reflections in, you, no amount of space here will show it as a reflection. But by putting stuff above, so that later you can put some, you can replicate it below. It gives that illusion <coughs> that uh, it is an actual, it's fairly placid. Uh, although the, the river itself, uh, because it's wide, is more or less reflecting what's above it or beyond it. Um, and it's such a such a lovely, inspiring thing to do is to stand by a river and just look at it and study it and then try and paint it. Thanks for watching. I'll just take you out a bit again. Oh, there we are. Goodbye for now. See you later.